type in the command smash. And what it does is it's going to roll out all the different sides that I need to make this twisted arch. Clear this workspace for the next thing that I smash. I'm just going to go ahead and slide that up. And then I know I need there to be three copies of this. So instead of running smash more times, I'm just going to run copy and just copy it over. I have three of them. One, two, three that are not currently intersecting any of the building. So I'm going to run the split command with that one. And the object to split is going to be this one. Enter the cutting object in this case is just this form. Enter. And so now I have it separated and clear the workspace. Join anything that's intersecting together. When we go and smash it, it then will notch together rather than intersect and collide and stop us from making it the way it's supposed to be. I also know that I did not need this part of my model, so I'm going to go and delete that out. And highlight these things here with shift and run boolean union, run smash. Now we smashed out all the pieces we need to make that main form. In the top view, let's go and clear the workspace. So be mindful of how you are organizing your project. It'll help with assembly later. Contour, which will help us with our floor plates. So let's go and run contour real quick. And I only really want to run contour in the volumes that have floor plates. And we'll hit enter on that. Contour base point, better to be in a side view for this or a front view. So I'm going to choose the bottom. 90 degrees to the floor plates so that usually that's straight up. And then I want my floor to floor height. So in this case, 14 feet is what I designed for. However, you could do 12, 16, whatever your uh, finished model ended up being from finished floor to finished floor. Now this only works if you were consistent in your floor plate heights. Otherwise, you might just want to contour like one at a time. I'm going to hit enter here. So if I was contouring one at a time, I would just run it like this and then select the object, enter, and then have a new base point right here, right? And then run that up at a different rate of cuts. All right, so now with those lines contoured, I need to pick all of them. I can lock my laser cut model too and just do a big box around that, to get all these two that were left inside. Slide them over, so that's my second floor. This is my third floor. Clean this up. So in a top view, this needs to be trimmed so I can cut out as one floor plate. Highlight all of these and just say project to C plane. Delete input objects. In this case, we want to say yes. And now they're all flat on the ground, straight up to clear the work area. There's a couple other commands you should know about. If you were going to import a model from, let's say, Revit as an FBX file or a DWG file into Rhino, you could do a mesh outline command, which will then outline all the windows, turn them into lines. If I go from a right view here, and let's go to shaded to make this look a little bit easier. Mesh outline, pick a face, enter, and now you see that it's outlined it. If we go back to perspective, you can see the outline, and then we can just go and rotate that down, project to C plane. Lead input, yes. It's just a handy command to know for laser cutting. You might also find another command called unroll SRF UV to be handy. So sometimes smash doesn't work if something's very organic. So you can do something called unroll SRF, a sub D box, so you can see what I'm talking about. It's going to not be as accurate, right? And so the smash kind of worked. Man, that's, that's pretty crazy. Surf UV, but similar crazy forms but it didn't give us any kind of error about the accuracy. You will find applications for it, I'm sure. Make 2D, that's another one. So let's say I was in a top view and I wanted just to capture all these lines as a 2D. I could highlight it all and say make 2D, say okay. And now it made a 2D version of that. So if we go to perspective, you can see what I'm talking about. It puts it all on its own layer right here. I don't really need that, so I'm going to go and delete it. So in the top display, you see how we have the lines that represent the center of these different surfaces. We don't really want to see those anymore. So let's go to technical, and that's going to get rid of all that. We can turn off our laser cut model, file, export, selected, and we can either highlight this all or right click on our laser cut lines and say select objects, and then we can go and laser cut that as DWG line work or whatever you need for your laser cutter and say, okay. 
I have a template that I use, um, which is at the end of my laser cut from Revit video, which I'll link again above. I have a template for AutoCAD that I take all my line work into and just adjust it from there. But let's say you wanted a PDF and you wanted to scale everything as a PDF ready for a laser cutter. You can do that straight from Rhino as well. You don't need a, a template like I use. So you can go to the bottom here and hit the plus sign. Here you can see I made one already. But when you hit that plus sign, say new layout. Here I'm going to say laser cut too. We can say it's going to be a Rhino PDF custom and we want to make it the size of the bed of your laser cutter. So in my case, 32 by 20 and it's going to be in inches for the units I'm using. I have everything in here and it's like, oh great, everything fits awesome. Well, I might want to make a scale though to this. So when you have that selected, so we click on the properties with that selected and this is the scale value, order scale. That would be one inch equals four feet. So I would type in four and this is going to be way too big. If this was going to be a eight scale, I would just go and type in one over eight. So think of this as a fraction, with how Rhino has this set up. So one to eight, and this is inches to feet. So basically one eighth of an inch equals a foot in real life or one inch on the page equals eight foot in real life. I do need to change this back. I double click in to technical. And now this will cut out nice and neat and clean. So now I'm ready to PDF this file print. And here we have Rhino PDF 32 by 20 for my bed size of my laser cutter. My resolution does not have to be 600, 300 is probably even, even just fine. But whatever you want to do for that uh, vector output, so that way it can cut. Usually you need vector lines for cutting, raster for engraving. You can do print color, black and white, whatever you need for your laser cutter. But we want to just make sure that we don't change the scale. So 100% because we already adjusted the scale that we want. Don't worry about this. We've already set that. That's what a 16th inch equals a foot scale would relate to. And then we just want to go and say print and that will PDF it for us. I should note that right here, I could laser cut those as well by doing smash and just keeping the one strip and the thickness of the material then can represent wooden beam. Or what I can do is just use balsa wood. And depending on the scale I end up making these at, I'll just buy the right balsa to then go and make these out and just cut them to length. So up to you, but if you smash it, you really only need something this small to keep one side of it. Once again, the thickness of the material will represent the other five sides. Okay, with all that, now you know how to take something from Rhino and laser cut it. You know some of the essential commands. I hope you found this tutorial enjoyable. Make sure to save, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.